Dave here, how are you? Today is the 24th of September, or September 24, if you want to read it that way, 2023. Today on the show, I have a couple of things that I want to show you. Moving along on the, uh, on the drawing, of course, oh, sorry, not on the drawing, on the um, toolbox. <laughs> I, I was just glancing out the corner of my eye to see if the show was actually running showing on the other screen. That's fine. Excellent. Okay, so hello to everyone. I'm not even going to read names because I just want to get into it. Now, I have decided to create the toolbox sliding drawer out of old drawer fronts from a project that my great grandfather made for my mother. He died during the process of making this. Not that woodwork killed him, but he was old. And so what I've done is I've created this sliding, or actually this, this drawer, and I'll bring it over, almost entirely from recycled drawers. I have got all these clamps on here at the moment because I, uh, I was, I'll show you. I've put a couple of drawer slides in this, on the inside of this box. So I'll take all these off. And that's what they were for. And I'll explain uh, a little bit as I go along. Now you can see this end. I haven't done anything apart from glue it, clamp it, and put it together. But the other end, I've actually put a finish. Well, I've, I've finished it off. And that's what we're going to do at the moment. I'll pop this down here for the moment. Move these guys out of the way. I trust everyone's had a good week. We've been extremely busy. I've been doing a lot of painting. Uh, we are having a wedding here. Well, the wedding reception will be here in another few weeks. And I'm trying to get the property up to scratch because it's my grandson's wedding. And I do not want to let the team down. I want him to have... He wanted to have the reception here. I will pull all stops out to make it as pretty and um, nice for him and his guests. Anyway, here we go. I'll show you this. This inside, now you can see there's a lip there. Now that's for another couple of drawers that I'm going to put inside here. And on this side, you can see I put a spacer in. Now this is just plywood. I'll, I'll take that out right now. And yeah, I just thought it might be nice. And it also made me extract the digit and do a lot of maintenance that hasn't, hasn't been done for so long. Um, how is Toowoomba this morning? I don't know, but I'm guessing you're asking someone else, not me. Uh, at the moment, I'm going in there and popping this out. These were a couple of ply packers that I put in. I ripped to the right size, the right height. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do anything else underneath to, uh, to stop things catching in there. But I've got a nice area here now. A couple of drawer slides. Out of silky oak again. I ripped all of these on my small bandsaw. I don't, I'm not keen on putting really small stuff over my table saw. People do it. I'm not one of those people. Uh, right, the, one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to dress this up to look like that. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? This is camphor laurel and this is silky oak. A nice high contrast. Now this bloody well better work when I put the oil on it at the end of the show to show how it's going to pop. Now one of the other things about the finish that I'm using, which is this stuff, this uh, Satin Evolution by Widow Wax. It's a water-based product. And I've had a lot of success with putting it on Purple Heart and, not the, and the Purple Heart not going brown. Uh, I used another product called Estopol and it ended up sending all my Purple Heart brown on other projects. So I've had to sand it back in that area and put another type of, put this water-based finish on it. Let's have a look there. Um, Skip, hi. 
uh, in your neck of the woods. Uh, all right, you keep on chatting, guys. <laughs> You're up in Ipswich, are you, Peter? All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is dovetails when you're going thin stock to thicker stock. Now you'll see there, that is 11 millimeters thick. This is 17. So the first thing I want to talk about is how to do that with Gifkin's jig. Now, the thing is, the book, and I'll see if I can find it in the book for you, says that for the B10 jig, which is this one here, see how it says B10, it's upside down, but not to worry, it says B10. That's the size of the comb or the template for the particular router cutters that Cole says you use with that particular template. Okay, so this is the, this is the one that you cut the pins with and the other dovetail cutter um, cuts the dovetails, obviously. Now, yeah, so the dovetail cutter cuts that shape and you just basically go in, bang, 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 and that's it. The pins are using the straight cutter and the comb is angled like this, which is the same angle, 14 degrees, as the dove cutter, the dovetail cutter but it's a straight cut. So it creates these fingers or pins that go in between the dovetails. Now this is where we, I've, I've machined all my material for the ends of the box down to 11 millimeters thick. Too thin for this particular jig. But I'd already started down the track using this jig and I thought, well, I want, I'm not gonna cut more wood. How can I do it? So there's a way, there's a way. Let me have a quick look in here first. In here, you'll see Cole's got all the different jigs and the different um, thick, minimum thickness and maximum thickness of stock that you can use. I'm not talking about width, I'm talking about the thickness. <clears throat> all right. I've got a, I've got a whiteboard. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, play school teacher for a bit. And maybe we should go to Carl Camp for this. I don't know if it's going to be able to focus on it or not. Uh, if I come in kind of close, let me move this one around a little bit there. Let's see how this goes. All right. I'm going to put a little mark up here for it to focus on. There we go. That should hold focus. Now, the pins let me see if I can draw this. I'm going to just draw the blank of wood. There we go. That's the blank of wood, which is this one side of my box. Now, this is the 22 mil. Oh, sorry, this is the uh, 17 millimeter thick piece of wood. So that's. which is just under three quarters of an inch, 19 millimeters, three quarters. So it's probably very close to five eighths, bit, bit, bit thicker. Now, we want it to go, we want the pins to go through 11 millimeter thick stock that's got the dovetails cut into them already. Like that, so 11 millimeters is the thickness across here. Now, in the book, it says minimum is 13 millimeters. Uh, min, there we go. <laughs> it's, I've been working hard. Give me a break. Okay, so, how do we do it? Well, I'm going to explain a little bit more over here. This is the jig, and this is the pin side, and the router cutter is this one. Now, the 
router cutter has, <clears throat> let me see if I might come to the front camera for this again. Oh, I've got a close up. There we go. We'll do that one. All right. So the router cutter has length of blade from there to there, 22 millimeters, hence your maximum depth. You can't go more than that. Say you want to go 24 millimeters with this particular comb. Well, the blade's not long enough and you're going to end up with parts not cut. So hence 22 is the max. The minimum is governed by this, by the bearing, the width of the bearing, sorry, by there. I might just move this down a little bit. There. So the width of the bearing from here to here and the thickness of the comb, which is this thickness here from here to here. Yep, missed it again, from here to here. When this guy is in here, that is not touching the comb. This is touching the comb. The bearing is actually touching inside the comb. And you don't want it too low because you might slip off off that bearing and it's spinning really fast and it's going to bugger things up. So I think Cole's got it around two millimeters minimum bearing on the comb. The bearing is bearing onto the comb minimum of two millimeters. That's giving me 13 millimeters of cutter exposed this way. This part here. So it's going up into the end of the piece of wood by 13 millimeters. Coming back to my situation where I had 11 millimeters and I thought to myself, what am I going to do? So I thought about, I tried to fudge it down as far as I could and I thought, no, this is too dangerous. This is going to end up with a bit of claret spraying around the workshop and Vicky would not be happy about that. Neither would I, <laughs> it would hurt. So I thought, what you can do is cut your length that the pins are going to be on longer. So let's go up to this camera at the top again. So my length of timber should be this long. Let's, let's just call it 900 millimeters is from there to there, which is the overall length that I want my box to be. And I realize now that my section here, instead of being 13 there, is now 11. So we can cheat. We say, all right, well, the difference is two millimeters and it's going to be at either end. So that's four. Two plus two equals four. Basic mathematics. Let's make our blank 904 and set the jig to run 13 millimeters deep. And don't worry about it because what's going to happen is the jig is thinking, yeah, we've got 13 millimeters here. The tails, the pins are going to penetrate a little bit. I'm exaggerating big time. They're going to come out that far and we're going to cut them off. See, remember it says 904, which has come out an extra two millimeters here, which is that space there. So it's pretty easy. Then what we do is well, after we've done the created the, the pins with the jig. Then we put the box together, dry fit, and we get a pencil. And um, this is now 11 millimeters here. We get a pencil and we mark it down the inside. Now the pencil has got thickness, take it over to the saw, and we cut that two millimeters off or one and a half or what, whatever it is at a drop saw or on a table saw with a slate or whatever you want. And then you have a correct fitting 900 from here to here, and it bloody well works. <laughs> now, the problem that I had is because I was basically the sacrifice <laughs> to doing this, it didn't hit me until I'd actually cut the blanks and I did the whole thing. 
And so what happened then was, I'll just move this across a little bit, see if I can make it fit in it, give us a bit more space there. Um, yeah, that's all right. Yep, <clears throat> so I had already cut it. So my box now is four millimeters short. I've got an answer for that too. I've got an answer for everything, haven't I? Does that make sense? What I've just said then, create your, the pins longer than the tight, longer and stay safe with the jig. You're not going to have a mess. It, um, I, I'm catching a little bit down the side here. I'm, I'm wondering if people are actually, I'm watching, good morning everyone. Cole, what did you think? I just went through all this advice on how to go to a thinner thickness with the B10 than 13 millimeters in a safe method. This is 11 millimeters, obviously, so your material, your minimum thickness, you say, is 13. Well, I show you a hack on how to use your jig perfectly safely and still get exact measurements, but using a thinner stock than is recommended. I understand that a lot of people will probably look at it and go, oh, you know, I don't know if I'd ever want to do that. But it's just something that happened as I was going along. Now, because I stuffed up on the, when I did it, I've now got a box that is four millimeters too short. So what I've done now, or what I'm going to do, is I'm going to use two millimeter thick adhesive felt. You know, like I used in the bottom of the drawers um, and in the bottom of the sliding tools in the other toolbox. That's about one and a half millimeters thick. So that will give it a nice cushion as it goes in. And so when the box is moved, you won't hear it going clunk, clunk, clunk. Just the tools inside will be going clunk. And the other thing is the, um, I, I'm curious what's happening over here now with this. No, I'm not gonna touch anything. It's, it looks like it's coming up well. Um, I'm hoping it's coming up well. Well explained, Rod. Thank you, thank you. All right, so uh, where was I? All right, that will act as a cushion as the box goes in, into the side of the other box. And also, <clears throat> I'm doing roundovers on the box. I tried putting it in with just sharp dovetail corners, which is how we're gonna do things right away at the moment. And then I'll exp you'll understand why I put the rounds in. Give me a second, I'm gonna grab a couple of clamps and I'm gonna show you the way that I am now doing tidying up my dovetails. I was doing it one way and I've stopped doing it that way. Now I'm gonna do it another way. I have been using a small plane, like a really low angle block plane, but I found if the timber had the grain going the wrong direction anywhere, so say I had um, the timber, the grain here was coming up and I was coming in from the end. I could, I could plane the end grain on the, um, on the tails really easily. But the stock that the pin is on, I found that every now and then if I, if I got through the tails all the way down or through the, through the tails, I was starting to lift the grain and I was having to do extra sanding and it's bloody nuisance. Are you gonna try it yourself, Cole? Excellent. It worked really, really well. So now I don't bring a plane anywhere near this. You know, it's just, and I've been told this by guys on the show before. They said, don't do that, use 60 grit paper. And I've always thought, no, that's not, that's not very orthodox. I'm gonna use a plane like all the smart asses. <laughs> on YouTube do. But I think I'm gonna stick with what you guys have told me. Don't use it, use, use 60 grit paper. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm using one of these absolutely beautiful single-handed clamps and just gonna put it on the end of my bench. I can't use the, um, what was I gonna say? I can't use the dovetail uh, clamps, the micro jig style clamps, because they don't open up enough for the width of this box. So I've got the one-handed clamp there. I'll bring this around this side. 
and put this camera on in a second. Let's see how this looks. Uh, camera four, I think it is. There, that's all right. So you can see I've got a clamp around the back here and to hold the other side, I'm using an 800 millimeter clamp across right to the back of my bench and then in. Now it's protected by the cushion strip here. The box is perfectly safe. So that's got it clamped nicely. And now another little tip I'm going to give you. Take it or leave it, I don't really care. <clears throat> and that is to do with sanding and storing sandpaper. Let's go to the other camera. I use these to store different grades. And you can see I've got written on it 220, 120, 120, 180, all that kind of stuff. The top box has just got a whole lot of assort. These are just ice cream containers, plastic ice cream containers. People throw them away. This one's got a whole lot of all sorts of sizes. The next one, I stack them the most aggressive grit, 60, uh, 80, and so on. They go on to the top of each other on purpose to stop wood chips or sawdust going in there. I don't want that in there because if I have sawdust going in and it somehow it gets onto here, like that little chip there, that creates one proud area on the sound paper, on the sound, on the sandpaper. And if I've got a little bit proud, that is going to put so many swirly marks all over the job. I don't want that. And this is so I don't get sawdust on the Velcro. Because Velcro attracts sawdust like, I don't know, uh, there's all sorts of images coming up at the moment. I'm not even going to say honey to the bees. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to put this on. This is 60. See, believe it or not, 60 grit paper. I tried 40. Bad move. It's too aggressive. And I keep on going back to it. So, you know, old hands that watch the show are very kind. <laughs> say, Dave, 60 grit paper. Just use 60 grit paper. Believe me. All right, the next thing I want to do also is I turn my dust extractor's suction speed all the way down. I'll turn it on. You can hear it start. I'll turn it on flat trap to start. And now I'm going to turn it down. And that's so it's not sucking the sand up hard down on the surface and absolutely squishing it. Okay. Locked. This is going to make a little bit of noise, not a lot. Not me slurping, not me slurping, just this. All right, we'll go over to this cam camera over here again. You can watch. Now remember what I did was I got a pencil and I went along and while it was dry, when it was, before I glued it together while it was dry, marked all the ends, took it over to the saw and docked them all off. Otherwise these would have been up around there somewhere. But now that, so they would have been up here. So I've cut them down. All right. Don't rest the, the sand up like that. Try to make sure that you're holding the sander parallel to this surface here. Don't roll the edge because that'll be horrible as well. Try to keep more of the sander back here. Don't have it on the center because then you're not really going to work out where you are. All right, here we go. nearly done. There's no tear out. There's no lift of the grain here. It's just, 
it's just nice. Now as I'm coming up to it, I'm pushing down onto the end a little bit harder. And keep your eye on it. Don't work it. Don't let it go run, 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 and then you turn around and go, oh God, I've gone too far. Beautiful. We'll do this side. That's my 60 grit, done. Tip this up just a touch. That's the 60 grit all done. Oh, the camphor laurel smells beautiful. So, I will take the 60 off, return it to its rightful spot. Now, the other thing is I have the papers opposed. Don't put it on top like that, turn them alternate them so they don't stick together in there. Uh, the next one is an 80 grit. Now you can have a specialized sustainer from Festool for doing this and that's fine and I've got one. But I find this works better. <laughs> They're gonna be so annoyed that I've said that but I do, I find it works better. Okay, 80 grit. Um, I'm wondering whether I can bring maybe Carl Cam into the into the fray. Let's have a look. A close up. I can, but I'm I'm going. It's not going to be super sharp. Ah, uh, come on. Ah, I'm messing things up. Messing things up big time. Okay. Uh, I'll go back to this one. Okay. This one, this one, uh, that one. That one, that's the one I'm after. I'm mucking around on the other one. You can see everything as I'm doing it. That's not too bad. We'll have a look at that one. Okay, so there, that's 60 grit paper. We're going to go 80. That feels really nice. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a squiggly. We do this so that you can see if you're actually going through. That's, I've put a pencil mark on there. You may not see it very well. Uh, what are we up to? That was 80, I'll pop that one in. And then 120. Now keep making comments because I read these later on. I'll watch the show later on tonight, see if anyone has been giving me a hard time. Ha, 120. All of my pencil lines have gone, which means that's done. Squiggly up it again. That was 120. And you can see on the sides, I've written 80, 120, 180, 220. So I can now just open it up at the 120, drop that in. I did a video on it. I might put a link on, <laughs> on how to go and bludge. Uh, I, I just put a, face, a post on Facebook in the area, the local area, Facebook page. Has anyone got any blue ice cream containers, two litres? I'll be around and grab them. And I had a heap of people say, yeah, you can have them, not a problem, we're just going to throw them out. Okay. 
Okay, that's 180. Isn't it looking beautiful? No, I'm not going to. I'm not, I'm not going to, Cole. I'm going to leave these holes in. You know why? It's a toolbox. I could have, but the reason they're there, they happened, they were already in the existing drawer. So all I, all I did was open them up a little bit wider to six millimeters, and the drawer base is cowrie. It's, it was the back of one of these drawers. I've had, I've had so, so much fun doing this project. Okay, this is a 220. And I'm not going to sand it down to, to anywhere near that I did last time, because I want to get this done. 220, oh, pencil marks. All right, next thing, while I've got it there, this little fellow. We're gonna put a 3 16th round on it. I'll take this out of here. Now, the reason I'm gonna do that now is because I want, I, I wanna do some more sanding after the round over goes on. This will make a little bit of noise, not, not too much. And remember, I've 3D printed this thing and this thing. That goes straight in there, I love it. And I'm gonna turn the speed up on the dust extractor. There we go. I'm going to do a round over there, 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 and there. I'm not going to do here because this is the where it will be sliding. One of the other things I've got to do is have a quick, quick sip of coffee. Ah, come back to this camera here. Okay, one of the other things I've got to do is now plane this top because I was very naughty and I didn't make them exactly the same width. Now I made allowance for that as I went along with the jig. I'm not going to tell you how I did it. Uh, I did it, it worked. And that's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'll back this off there. But that I found is a whole lot neater to do the dovetails than using a plane. It's just glorious. I love it, I love it, I love it. And this is a really nice contrast. No tear out, no, oh my God, I've stuffed the job. Okay. Couple of dogs, which I've got on the floor there, of course. <laughs> um, I'll put a dog there and a dog there, I think. And that there. Now I want to plane this. And I, which I can do and I've got to go the other direction. You really got to look at the grain direction. So I'm going to plane that way. So I've just got a couple of stops there. Now this side is higher. So I'll start at this end. Might want to watch. Let's see if I can go to Carl Cam. Again. Let's see how that goes. Very close down there. That's as far as I dare go. Pop that guy over there. 
I've already done the other end. So now I'm going to do the round over. You can see just here, possibly, you can see I've done a round over. You can see the end that I haven't done there. So I'm going to round over on the inside and the other side, seeing we've already done the ends. And I'll do this a little bit more as well. So just a bit more noise. <clears throat> the end. Whoop, wonk on all over the place. And back the other way. One of the great things is this plate will straddle the inside, but it didn't, well, not quite long enough for the outside. Beautiful. All right, now that I've got, got it uh, finished there, I'm going to sand that as it is with the 220 paper. I don't need to go finer. Hold on. Beautiful. camera so you can keep seeing what's being talked about. Okay, I'm going to do the ends. Actually, spin that around, I guess. And you can watch it there. Uh, that one. There we go. Tip it up just a touch. Okay, kiddies, what haven't I done? I've just, just a bit more here. I haven't turned the speed down on the dust extractor, but I'm not going to worry about it. Beautiful. Come back to this camera. Here. All right, now I'm going to get a little bit of um, hand paper instead of using the machine. And I have this block here. I'll bring it up and show you. Uh, I'm going to go 400, I think. I use this for um, round over sections because, look at that. It goes wherever I want it to. This is a bit of 400 paper and I'll quickly it just takes the shape see that I'll move these couple of guys out of the way and those things off the end of the bench and over the top a little bit coarser on that. The reason being, it's got a couple of chatter marks. I'll use some 180 grit paper down there, see if that'll do it. You can hear it cutting much better.
and the inside. That is so nice. It's such, it's so rewarding. This would have just been sent to a bloody tip somewhere, smashed up and burnt, or smashed up and turned into sawdust. I find that so upsetting. <laughs> it's weird. If I didn't have the connection, as in this was a family piece, well then I possibly wouldn't be that concerned. I don't know. I don't know. Now, one of the other things I'm going to do, that's looking pretty good. So we're going to, oh, I'll hit it with the 400. Uh, one of the other things I'm going to do is make some, oh, just beautiful. Make some drawers that are going to slide in the top of this. Now, I've made this, hopefully, to be the right size for tape measures, uh, my little block plane. I had all of these grand designs, as we all do, as to how I was going to make this thing work. Have a handle in the middle. <laughs> Not working. You know why? Because when this guy is down here, I can't, I can't reach it comfortably. It's too, too far down. I need this to be down the bottom is for, for things like my um, Yankee screwdriver and things like that that can go down under here. This will go into a box like so and be up near the top. Now also with the boxes that I make, and I've also made it so it can fit in down there as well. You tend to do things so that it, the box has got capacity to do more than what you designed it to do. Um, so the drawers that I make, I'm going to make them all out of, this, out of this same bloody stuff that I got. This is cowrie pine. This was the side of a drawer. Or sorry, sorry, this was the back of one of the drawers. This is the side of another drawer. These are all hand cut dovetails. You know, I'd like to try and hold on to those, but it's not going to happen. You can see the re relief that was at the back of the drawer. So this would have been the bottom. This would have been the top. And so as you put the drawer in, it doesn't catch as it's being pushed backwards and forwards. Um, this would have been the front. And I've got this nice piece here. And I've got a couple of other pieces lying around as well. I will mill this all down to six millimeters thick. At the moment, it's around about nine. I don't want it that thick. I want it to be six millimeters. I'll use Cole's smaller jigs for this. And I'm going to have two drawers that will fill this area side by side. And I may even make drawers that go inside those. I don't know yet. But the reason I'm going to have two, instead of just having one that slides backwards and forwards, I will also put in them um, holes at the ends. So I can put my fingers in and lift rather than just trying to like this, which is awkward. And the bottom of the drawers will be actually glued to the bottom, like straight hard onto the bottom. See how this one, I've let it in. But this is the main part. That's another part of the drawer as well. That's cowrie pine. I was looking all over the place for plywood to do it with. And I thought, oh yeah, I'll, I'll find a bit of stuff. And, do, and I couldn't find anything the right size. And I thought, blow me down, I've got another piece of cowrie there, I'll just do that. So I thickness the cowrie down to, down to six, put the flat top blade that I've got, the Torcata blade, that box making blade that I've had for years, and pop that in the saw, dressed every, got it all working. I haven't put any slots in the end, because this is only 11 millimeters. And honestly, that's not a big span. What I might do, what I might do, I'm, I probably won't, is put a glue block in here to support it. But it's really not going to go anywhere. 
it's not going to do anything. Um, it's in, it's glued all the way around inside the there as well. It's not concerning me. People might say, well, this might expand and contract this direction and split the bottom. I don't think it will. All of this timber is so well seasoned from just being in this workshop um, and also the age of the stuff. Now I've got to get another block. I'm going to just take the arras off that little piece in here. And the reason, that's much better. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to feel around in here to get things out of there and I don't want to catch a splinter as I do that. I don't want it to be sharp, cut myself. This is, remember I keep on saying, I like all the things that I make to be human friendly, that I don't want them there to be able to give me a hard time. And I'm going to have to do the underside of that as well. Not bad, but not great. Cork blocks have got a chamfered side on one, or this one does, and a hard side on the other. I'm going to go in with a hard side. I'm just sanding the underside. Then we'll put, hit it with the wax. That's the part I'm looking forward to. I want to see how this silky, if it's going to pop or if it's going to make me look like an idiot. Not hard. Not hard, I hear you all say. Oh, that's really nice. I'm doing the top as well. Hey, Pierre, how are you, buddy? Good boy. We were down at Richmond Markets yesterday. I put a post on Facebook. Dicky had a great day. It's so rewarding when you put all, spend a lot of time and effort working on a product and she spends a lot of time making her vodka. It's a potato based recipe she uses. It's not ethanol or anything. She does it from scratch and she, man, she puts a lot of effort in. And when people turn around and have a taste, and they say, you know what? Give me two bottles. It's a, it's, it's a lovely thing. And she deserves it. Oh, that's nice. That is so nice. All right. Time for me to give it a quick touch with the um, dust extractor. With the brush on. And then we'll put a finish on. Very, very looking forward to it. Very looking forward to it. Want to get all the dust out of there because you don't want that in the finish at all. Because it just, it's ugly. So nice. And off the bench. I'm quite impressed with how the uh, that dust port works on the trim router, the little Ryobi trim router, the little dust port that I printed. those little holes at the end. All right. So my plan is at this stage is I will put the finish on and if I go past 12 o'clock, I'll turn the show off and I'll keep doing the finish in the Patreons meeting and the patrons meeting. Now the other thing, if you have a look in the video description down below, I have put out a request <clears throat> because Things are getting harder and harder these days to, to make a buck and to survive and to eat and pay for power and all that kind of stuff. So I thought 
a nice way if you're interested if you want to help me that's your call totally up to you without costing you anything <laughs> that's the big thing most people say oh i don't want to pay any money fine don't pay any money but i've put a link to amazon australia now it's to a speed brace i would like you to copy to click on that link and then bookmark so once you've clicked on the link it will open up amazon if you don't like Amazon, that's fine. I get that as well. But if you could click on the link, this is for Australia. I'll do another one for America as well, and the United States and for whatever. And if you can click on that link, it will open it up and then bookmark. There's a little thing on Google how to bookmark. I'm not going to teach you how to bookmark stuff. Bookmark it and then go to the bottom of your bookmark list and select it, drag it up and put it right across the top you know where the location bar is where whatever website you're on and underneath that there's all your quick ones that you just normally click on and that will have speed brace amazon and every time you use that and you buy something on amazon it's not going to cost you any more but i will get a commission so if you are able to do that for me that would be fantastic that's the only bit of advertising you'll notice i don't have ads at the beginning of the show i might put an ad at the end of the show in another day or two but i'm i need to be able to uh, keep ex existing i've noticed since i've retired my bank account is starting to do this thing and so hence I'll put put my hand up i'm not proud give me a hand if you can if you, if you don't want to do it, that's fine. I, I, I'm still going to do the show, but if, if you can, that'd be good. Brush. I'm not going to use that one, it's too wet. What's this one like? That also is too wet. They haven't dried out enough for me. I've been using brushes at night time, and obviously that one's got gunk on it. Because I'm painting, painting, painting around windows and skirting boards, architraves, door jams, I'm replacing door jams. Uh, where are we? Get one of these guys out. I'll get one of the brushes that I've already conditioned. There we go. Lovely. Did you see the video I did on conditioning these brushes? Now that will hold product really well. They work so nicely. Okay, I'm gonna do the inside first and then we'll do the outside. That's where it's really gonna pop. Uh, stir this up and open the can. Now the other thing about Whittle Wax is I have no association with them. The other thing about Whittle Wax that I like is as I think I mentioned at the beginning of the show, the Purple Heart doesn't go brown that's what i found it stays purple other products that i've used it goes brown i'm excited i need to stir this remember i keep all of my little bits of off cut trim them down i make stirring sticks uh what else was i going to say probably heaps getting all the time the the tips on using the gifkins jig i said that was a mistake but it went great. Um, how can I do that on an iPad? We'll try to bookmark. Nice to lend a hand when you can. Done that, Dave. Works well. Thank you. Okay, so if people could help right out there as far as how he does it on an iPad, that'd be great. I'm pretty sure I'm not an Apple person. I'm PC. So uh, if you've got an Apple Mac and you can help Rod, that'd be great. As I just thought it might be an easy way keeps me alive, keeps you guys entertained, and you can buy goodies. And if you're a Prime member, become a Prime member as well uh, through that link, and uh, it helps me even more. And you get free delivery from the States, all that kind of, oh, look at this. Oh, that's the cowrie in the bottom just starting to pop. You can't see it, can you? I'm being a tease. I am being a tease. I think you might want to watch. Where's my mouse?
Here we go. Bit more, it's soaking it up. It's loving it. Got it on the camphor at the end as well. It's looking beautiful. All right, we're going to do the silky down here. Oh, oh, it's going to be magic on the outside. I can't wait. I absolutely cannot wait to do the outside. It's looking beautiful here. What do you think? What do you think of that? more on the brush just a toolbox Dave says hey eh? <laughs> just a toolbox well why not I should have taken that pencil line off but I'm slack look at that look at that Okay, other side. Oh, isn't it beautiful? It's like it's like, um, you've seen those handbags and shoes that people get made out of crocodile skin? That's what this was reminding me of. The silky oak looks like crocodile skin. Don't you reckon? Don't worry, I'm, I'm going to come over and go to the other camera in a minute. And we can all have a, a bit of a look. I'll go to the other camera so you can all keep chatting. Uh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now I'm going to do the camphor on the inside. I'm not going to show you yet. You can wait till I do the outside. Beautiful. Just bloody beautiful. That's all I can say. End. and this it's such a beautiful wood I was never really sold on silky oak I'm, I'm, I've always been a fan of the grain in um, hemlock Douglas fir, Oregon that, that kind of, and pine I, I love the nice big grain display in that style of timber and I, that's why I've never really been a fan of the um, the silky oak with the medullary rays I think they're called in a minute I'm going to do the dovetails and <laughs> that's the part that I'm really excited about I'll do the handles first oh, this is so beautiful all right, which face will I do first? How about I do this one? And I'll go up to Carl Cam for it. Uh, you're going to miss out on the conversation. And I'll go to that way. That's fine. I'll move it along so you can see it here. I'm going to do the handles first. And now, I'm making sure that I don't have too much ponding, because that wouldn't be good. Mm. 
Do it. Our carpet tech will be inundated tomorrow with people wanting to buy whittle wax. <laughs> I'm going to scoop that out and apply it. All right, that's that end. Um, what should I do, David? Let me think. I'll do the other side, but I'm going to do it by holding it at an angle. I'm sorry, I don't want to. I don't want to rest the other side down on the bench, and I don't want to use my painter's pyramids. So we'll do, do it like this. Bring this over here. This is the only first coat, remember. I've got to give it a couple of coats. All right. Now it's time for the end. <clears throat> it's rather nice. Uh, where are we? All right. I'm hoping I've saved the best part to the last. Move a couple of things out of the way. Push this along a little bit. So it's kind of hanging off the end. Let's see if we get much of a contrast here. That's what I was after. That's just so nice. And the other end is going to be even better. Then why do I know that? because the grain looks beautiful at the other end. I'll spin her around and you can watch the other end. <clears throat> look, look at this grain. I'll tip it down a little bit. Okay, this should pop. All right, I think when that dries, that is going to look stunning. All right. Now, the last thing I do, drop a clamp on the floor. <laughs> All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wind the show up. <clears throat> And we'll go to the Patreon meeting. And so if you want to join in there, by all means. Uh, and thanks again so much for watching. And if you can consider using one of those links for me, that would be wonderful. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and I shall catch you next week.